we've actually had some requests from people about the business side of coaching. So it is something that we touch on definitely during our courses, but you know, there's so much to cover in the courses that it's, it's, it's for sure not a big focus. And um, it's an important part of the coaching journey. So we've had a couple of requests from our current learners asking if we could utilize this additional um, time spot that we have uh, the first Monday, sorry, the first Wednesday, see I'm not awake yet, the first Wednesday of the month. So we can chat about the business side of coaching. Um, the goal is that after this particular session, uh, you will be awarded CCEUs for those of you who want them. Um, they'll be for resource development because these aren't core competencies, uh, but you will get CCEUs. Today's session, uh, I don't think we will have CCEUs, mainly because this is kind of, you know, setting ourselves up and seeing how we go. So at the end of this webinar, if we happen to cover things that um, we feel like deserve a CEU, then we'll definitely issue it. So um, want to make sure expectations are set. So please put up with us as we kind of navigate through this first webinar. Um, so the kinds of things that I want to talk about today is, again, please raise your hand if you are a coach and are willing to be on the panel. Um, I wanted to set the foundation as to the scope of this webinar. And I really want, I, the reason I muted everybody is because, or allowed to talk, is because I want you guys to participate. I want this webinar to become something that we create together, um, both in terms of, you know, just discussion, but at the very, very basic level in terms of the agenda that we set. So, you know, I joined Kocharia two years ago. Actually, it's been two years ago, a month ago. Woo. Um, I joined Kocharia two years ago. And even though I've been in a position of leadership quite a bit and um, I've coached, now I realize poorly, I've coached people um, and I've been coached, I, I didn't understand this space as well as I do now. And I'm learning about it every single day. I'm currently enrolled in coach training with a few of you who I see in the audience. So um, I'll be a coach at some point soon, but um, it's, it's a big space. And, you know, to be perfectly frank, I thought it was quite overwhelming when I first started learning about the coaching world. Um, it wasn't just, you know, the core competencies and the various theories and the, at Kocharia, we like to intermingle psychology as well as Eastern philosophies. So, you know, it was through Kocharya that I was exposed to meditation for the first time. Um, and it was something quite uh, weird for me because it, it was just, it was new and not something I've understood why it would work, much less actually see it work. So, um, yeah, I'm learning every single day. But the biggest, I think, um, challenge for me personally was getting a hold of even just speaking the language that coaches speak, um, all the jargon that's out there. Um, some of you may have actually seen a blog post that I wrote on Kocharia's website. Um, it's a guide to coach training because, yeah, just the sheer number of acronyms alone are completely overwhelming. So um, I figured that, you know, just as I had those challenges with just jargon and other basics, I figured that many of you would have these same challenges. Um, and others that I haven't thought of because end of the day, all of you either have been coaches or are starting to get into coaching. And it's not just, you know, something you're doing for fun. It's something you're doing either as part of your current job or something you're doing as a new business. So together we can learn how to all be successful in this world of coaching. Um, where I can be helpful is marketing. My background is in marketing, especially in digital. So for me, my bread and butter is things like building websites, social media, um, building an identity around um, yourself and a company. Um, I'm also really good at web tools. So I think it'd be good to do a session at some point where I could um, share with you the kinds of tools that I like to use for Kocharia and I've used for other small businesses. Um, which are free or very inexpensive, but effective and raise your, your profile professionalism um, online and with your clients. So that's kind of what I can bring to the table. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, a few of you who have started your own coaching business will also raise their hand throughout this series that we'll embark on together um, and, you know, share the kinds of things where you've had success as well as the things where you have challenges and together, um, Together we will learn and we will all 
change the world one person at a time. <laughs> right, Cindy? <laughs> oh, you're muted. In coaching, we say one conversation at a time. Oh, see, there you go. I learned something already. <laughs> um, okay, so I will just pause for a second. And I am very happy to just chat with Cindy and have a very informal conversation. Um, VG, first of all, I promoted you to the panel. Are you willing to chat? If you are, please unmute yourself and join. Um, also, is there anybody else? Cindy, but you can have a look at the attendee list, see um, if there's anyone who you think would be good to add against their will. <laughs> no, we'll ask you, we'll, we'll ask you, make sure that you're okay. Right, I can see lots of people here, so let's see. <laughs> Add them and see if they are willing to be experimental. Hey, Magda. Hi, VG. Uh, I, I have un, I'm muted myself because I'm in a bit of a noisy place, but I'll okay. get to a quieter place in a, in a okay. couple of minutes. So okay, I'll stay great. Muted. Okay, great. Um, in that case, so I will, um, I'll throw it out to you guys. So everyone is allowed to talk. So please just click on unmute yourself and go for it. Um, as you're starting your journey as a coach. Uh, some of you I see have just started training with us. Some actually, a few of you are going to be training with us, but haven't yet. What challenges do you want to address? What kinds of things are you finding perhaps daunting as you're venturing into coaching? Uh, let me, if I may. I'm, yes, I'm hello. Hi, Magda. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Dave. Hey. So uh, thank you for uh, starting this series. So I think what would be really helpful is to understand uh, coaching as a business, right? It is, it is, you need to be a lot more qualities within you that need to change when you are an entrepreneur. If we can start with that, what, what, it, what, is, what does it really mean? And then see how it syncs with the coaching as a business. That would be a great uh, value add. Okay, cool. Good feedback. Anyone else? Um, I have one. I have, okay, go on, go on. Oh, sorry. Um, so one thing that I've been thinking of is, you know, people who want to become uh, coaches, they come from very different backgrounds. So how can you, I mean, this might be in terms of branding, but how can we build a niche for ourselves? And also how, like, how can we set what our USP is and market that better? Cool. So it sounds like we should do maybe a, an entire webinar on marketing and defining things like USP, unique selling proposition. Um, yeah, like a primer on marketing and finding your niche. That's a really good one. Anyone else finding um, any challenges? Uh, yeah, I have a question there. Uh, yeah. Person, hi to you and hi to Cindy as well. This is the first time I'm talking. Hi, Deepa. So, uh, so the one challenge that I'm actually facing is, uh, you know, uh, to leave everything behind and take up coaching as a full-time career. So I really want to take it up, but I see a lot of risk there, uh, apart from the financial thing, of course. But uh, will I be able to enhance my skills to, so as to take up that risk of uh, being in only coaching? And that's one question I have for everybody there. Mm, that's really good. I think that's also, um, again, w today is kind of informal and a chat. I think it's also another great topic for a whole webinar. So, you yes. know, I speak to a lot of, uh, a lot of prospects throughout, you know, it's part of my job with Kocharia and people come from all sorts of walks of life. And, um, it's a very common question. And what's, what's interesting is how many people just kind of jump into it and, you know, they have the RAM approach of just, you know, it's going to happen. If you believe it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And yeah. then others take years and years to kind of transition. They first look for opportunities um, to coach within their current job. And then they move to coaching part-time. And then eventually they go into full-time. Um, even within Coach Aria, uh, some of our hmm. associates, uh, you know, they do training as part of their coaching practice. And then they do coaching. So yeah. they're not even doing coaching full time. They're doing kind of different aspects of it. So I think it'll be nice to have a panel of people who have taken different paths um, to share kind of what they have done. Um, hmm. And I think, yeah, Cindy, do you want to comment kind of maybe on your journey as a coach? How, how you got into this? That's, that's also been my approach. What you spoke about is the Ram approach. So I just said <laughs> yes to everything. 
Oh, I didn't even consider anything to be a risk, you know? So I never weighed it. When I started coach training, I was all excited about it, stars in my eyes. And I think the stars were there for a very long time because I did all the courses I could. Oh, you know, started a website immediately, opened a business, a formalized business immediately. Just coach, coach, coached any kind of client that wanted coaching because this was like 14 years ago where coaching was not as popular as it is right now. And eventually, you know, kind of a niche finds you because in the, in the beginning, all you want to do is accumulate coaching hours so you can get credentialed and, you know, meet the requirements. So that's how it was for me. And then, you know, eventually things begin to settle down and you begin to really begin to notice what you're really good at, that particular direction and you go there. Perhaps it's a journey of a beginner to becoming more advanced and choosing a particular field to specialize in. And I, I loved all things coaching, I mean, I still do. Whether it's assessing, mentoring, coaching, um, contributing to coaching in a larger space as chapter leader, um, building a brand in South Africa, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, I love all things coaching. Um, so I think that it's, it's the journey of a beginner's mindset of jumping in and doing it, and then eventually beginning to notice what you're really good at and developing yourself in that space. Mm. That actually resonates with me quite a bit, not in terms of becoming a coach, but in terms of just starting your own business. Um, when after my stint in, um, in Silicon Valley, I moved back to Chicago um, and I wanted to be my own boss. And, you know, I want marketing was what I knew. And at that point, I came from um, a very like hardcore software company. So that's where I thought I should be pursuing my opportunities. Um, and yeah, my first consulting gig that I got was in that space. But um, over, and I did the same thing. I registered a business. I put up a website, which has actually degraded over time. And ironically, I do websites for a living or I did websites for a living. And my personal website was, oh my gosh, atrocious. Um, so some people can tell you what it is, take it down. But uh, same thing. I found that as I was doing um, different projects, it was about being open to the opportunities that were presenting themselves and not being picky and not being presumptuous that, um, about the opportunities. You know, I knew that this was, I was I'm starting out. Um, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot of legwork and not everyone's going to want to work with me. Um, but you have to kind of see what sticks a little bit, unfortunately. So for me, I ended up, yeah, starting in this very specific, um, yes, software and, and like professional software for software developers. And then I ended up doing some work in retail, actually a lot in retail, oddly enough, which I knew nothing about at the start. Um, and what I ended up was small business. So actually how I connected with Cocharia was um, because of the niche that I developed as a marketer uh, in taking, being scrappy, in um, kind of, you know, DIY, um, in being agile, in my marketing approach and being able to do that for small businesses. So yeah, the niche found me and um, it's, it might take a while when you find the intersection of your skills with, you know, the market need. Um, and actually, I'm going to bring up a little uh, image that I found earlier. Can you see my screen? Ooh. Yeah, so I forget actually where I even saw this. I took a screenshot um, of a screenshot. And this was listed as obstacles um, in starting a coaching business. But I think it's really, honestly, like this is so relevant to pretty much any time you're starting off as a uh, individual and then a consultant. And um, this was my experience as well. So Cindy, I kind of wanted to ask you actually about this. As you were, um, as you were developing your coaching business, um, do these obstacles resonate? Are there particular things that you found that... Yeah, stood in your way. Like for, for me, uh, I think the biggest one that I find when I speak to um, even to organizations about coaching services and when I speak to, um, to prospects about coach training, I feel like people understand that coaching is a thing that exists, 
they understand that coaching is a thing that has different methods to its madness and it can be done well or it can be done poorly. And coaching is a thing that can achieve, not even can, people I think expect that coaching is a thing that can achieve results. And depending on who you speak to, they view coaching as a reward or a punishment or development. But people have these conceived notions, I feel like, of coaching um, where where I think the market confusion um, starts. So a lot of times when I have a conversation with people, I literally end up starting with, okay, so this is what coaching is. There's this thing called ICF, gives credentials. Here's what um, are the kinds of things that they teach you when you become a coach. It's about self-awareness. It's about listening, et cetera. So I feel like I have to give this entire really long spiel to even get people to be on the same page as to... This is the world we're talking about. Now let's talk about specifics within that world. Um, does that resonate with you at all? Yeah, of course. So Magda, when I became a coach, it wasn't just people didn't know how to understand coaching, the receiver, right, of the conversation. I myself didn't know how to explain it well enough for the other person to really get it. And it was a strange space and I eventually felt or I experienced listening, the other thing, you know, the thing that we do really well. So when people then began to talk, I would really listen well and then I would say, oh, you know, I know a process that could help you with that and it's coaching. Would you like me to do a session for you? And I found this really powerful with people that were working in companies and then, of course, I got all dressed up and got into the company and became, you know, the coach in the company after a while. So that's how I stepped in or got in because I would really listen well and then offer them a session. And as I began to do that, then only did I really get to learn how to explain what coaching was. Because in the beginning, it sounds like somebody put a whole lot of words together. It even wasn't even, it didn't even resonate well with me, you know, how to explain it. So even that process of explaining coaching to a market that didn't know what it was, was a learning journey for me. So how do you explain coaching? Not when you go to a client, and, oh, sorry, someone's... Yeah, so please, 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 please. Sorry, Viji. Yeah. Sorry, no, no, finish. You, you finish and, I'll, and I'll, I have a thought, but I'll share. Okay. Uh, Cindy, I was going to ask how now that you go to a situation where you're, you know, essentially pitching yourself and you need to explain what coaching is, what do you say? What resonates with your potential clients? No, you're going to, you're going to tell me something and then I would associate it with coaching. Okay. So I would okay. listen and then associate it. So it doesn't matter if you're telling me or whoever. So even if somebody wants to grow their business or, you know, there's a conflict at workplace or something, anything, a okay. life issue. Okay. Then I would go, you know, you should try coaching. Maybe it okay. would help you with that. And then offer them a session. Okay. So I began to offer lots of sessions. Okay. So how about I pretend that I, have, I am your client? <laughs> go for no, it. No, just for the pitch purposes. So I work in HR and I am getting a lot of complaints about our CEO just not changing behaviors. Um, he's being asked to, you know, he's got demands of his managers and the managers who are experts in their own fields are giving him feedback. Okay, well, yes, but you need to support me in this and this way. And he just refuses to, to change his ways. I, I don't know what to do. Hmm. So, okay. Then I would engage in you, with you in a coaching conversation around, so, you know, is this something that you want to talk about how you could manage it better? What do you want to work on here? And how do you want to work with this individual? And I would then, you know, engage with you. Can I do a session with you? Or would you like to experience how coaching works? Um, and tell you a bit about it. Like, you know, it's just a thought provoking conversation in which you would get to set some kind of objective or goal on how you would manage a situation better. Are you envision it to work for you? And we'll work through a series of conversations and sessions. And you would, you know, manage your own progress around it with the guidance of the coach. And, and then perhaps I would also offer, you know, do you think that this other person would benefit from coaching too? You know, I wouldn't miss that opportunity either. So, <laughs> so it sounds like you've learned to upsell your own services. 
Is that hard? No, no, no. You know, that, that process of noticing, and I always did this. So when, when whoever I'm pitching to, if you want to call that a pitch, uh, would say, where can we meet? And I would say, well, I could come to you, you know, and never do the opposite and suggest a coffee shop or anything. Because I wanted to always coach in that boardroom. Mm. So I very quickly got in, you know, via that process. So fortunately, I never had to do any email coaches, selling or any kind of marketing via word of mouth is how I got into a real, really established coaching business for the past 14 years. Mm. Hmm. Um, so it's a comment about background noise. I think it's just general feedback from one of our computers. So sorry about that, guys. Um, oh. the, the only oh. two people who are unmuted is me and Cindy. Uh, VG, I have other questions, but do you want to chime in quickly before I keep going? Okay, I'm nervous when you say you have a lot of questions, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to... <laughs> You've met me. I always have questions. Okay, so that makes two of us. So, <laughs> so usually I'm asking the questions. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's interesting to be on this side. So, uh, so a couple of things I just wanted to um, reflect on and add on really. Um, you know, this bit about um, in a new market, right, in an emerging industry. And I see this a lot, um, you know, in the Indian uh, setting. Is that we, apart from selling our services, are also sort of leading in creating and establishing an industry. Mm. So to that extent, there's fantastic opportunity out there. But there's also a fantastic sense of responsibility. And, you know, you're like the torchbearer. Uh, so I, I actually find that if you want your business to grow, you can't sort of look at it with a very conventional business lens as to just look at yourself. There is a lot of work. So I completely connect with you because, you know, the joke here and, you know, from where I come, there is a very big... Uh, organization called ICF, right? And uh, that is Integral Coach Factory. <laughs> so, <laughs> and on Instagram, I made the mistake of, you know, following the ICF hashtag. And what I get on my feed is regular posts about which train is going where, which coaches have been released. And I was like, are we in such a sad place? And, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm a volunteer leader here with ICF Chennai. And that's when I realized that there's so much to do yeah. in really, I think, creating a market in sort of explaining. Yeah, I mean, it, it sucks, you know, that you've got yeah. to sort of explain who you are and why you're doing this. But I think there's no other way out. Mm. And I think if all of us as a collective can do it, all of us benefit. So here is an industry where rather than intense competition, I think the more we sort of get together and create this industry, it's good for all of us. It's good for the collective. So that's been one uh, huge learning. So I, you know, I'm making myself vulnerable here, but I, I rarely view coaches as competition. Um, I'm, I'm super happy to collaborate. Because I think there's a huge market for you and for me and for every other coach out there, at least for a while. But I think we, we don't get that perspective. So, so that's one. Uh, about the bit on, you know, uh, you know, really having that conversation, right? I think the narrative changes when you are sort of gung-ho and bought into it. And again, let me admit with honesty that you know, while I got my first credential, uh, I was still a little, I think like what Deepa said, I was still very unsure to go out there and sort of remove all other identities of mine that I've had for so many years professionally and say, hey, I'm a coach. I didn't have that inner conviction. Yeah, because maybe I was not convinced about the difference I was, you know, the larger purpose. I didn't get my larger purpose. Uh, today I do. So today in, in the, you know, in, in, the, in the most uh, craziest of places, right, which are not typical marketing opportunities, I, I go and I speak the narrative of coaching. 
and it comes from within without without a structured speech without anything rehearsed because i think i'm convinced and i'm convinced about the larger role of coaching and i think in most successful and i'm going to wear my you know branding hat for a moment here i think in most successful stories of building brand uh, i think it's just so important for the brand to know its purpose do we all know our purpose as coaches what are we here to do what is the change that we want to see in the world i know this sounds a little philosophical but i think it's just very important to build yourself as an authentic brand that's really so, well said and i totally agree with that and you know one thing that i keep reading um if you are getting into coaching for the money you're <laughs> doing it for the wrong reasons um yes of course it's a business so i don't want to dissuade you but that shouldn't be your motivation um because there is a bit of uphill but also like you said building awareness figuring out who you are and really um believing in yourself and in what you do uh i mean i think you know at the beginning of this uh chat i said we'll change the world one person at a time and then Cindy said one conversation at a time but i i truly believe that's what coaching is and it's one of the reasons i joined um coach aria and am passionate about the space is that yes all of us can actually make an impact just in different ways but one conversation with a person at a time and um you know another thing that resonated with me there's a few things that resonated with me um one is about uh, awareness and brand building of just icf and coaching in general in my short time in involvement in coaching i've already experienced the increase in that so i think for you know those of you who are just starting in coaching i think this is a really good time to do this this is like i think we're like on the cusp of it becoming mainstream um i feel like I get, at least in the US I shouldn't speak for the world but at least in the US um there's been a renaissance of um of therapists and personal coaches and life coaches where before I think it was seen like it's only need based some hoity toity oh I have a therapist now it's like no mental health and well-being is part is, is something that we should be all doing it's taking care of you you go to the gym to take care of your body you should see other it should seek other um outlets that help you take care of your mind and your and your feelings etc so i feel like you know that is kind of paving the way uh paving the way for for coaching as well and i know therapy and coaching are very very different there's a really great slide i have for that if anything um i'm just saying that in terms of awareness of taking care of your mind um i think it's beneficial for the coaching profession and um you know even the kinds of requests that we get at coacharia for coaches um I'm I'm getting not just you know how can you help me um I'm seeing people actually coming and saying okay I have this new project that we're doing at work we're merging two companies we're starting a new management team um I want them to work well together it's part of HR's job to make sure that this goes well we think coaching is part of that so team coaching as well as individual and it's interesting that they already have that awareness um in other cases I'm actually seeing people come and say things like we're looking for pcc coaches so i don't have to go through this is icf spiel this is acc pcc mcc so yeah even in the past 2 years i've seen an increase in that awareness as well as um awareness of the specifics so these are all really really good trends um but the other thing that bj mentioned is the you know finding your niche um and cooperation and partnership something else that i can relate to um from my past world um in being a marketing consultant you know in the beginning you do view other marketing consultants as competition because end of the day like we're all you think we're all going for the same jobs but we aren't so um you know there's been many cases um that i see as in coaching too where i'm approaching a big organization and i cannot handle the project on my own i will need other marketers who are perhaps better than me at certain areas of marketing to support this project so it can be successful because i i literally can't handle it on my own and you know a few times i've seen this too um our our own coaches reaching out to us and saying hey magda i'm doing this thing um i need support of at least three other coaches who do you recommend that i should speak to so that's actually fueling um our strategy as coacharia as to what kind of tools and services we can provide um to make this cooperation and this awareness uh possible and successful so I mentioned before I think on one of the webinars um we're looking at um at at tech um literally applications web based or mobile where you know coaches can connect better and could you know combine forces um 
could find clients, etc. So hopefully that's going to be something that we will be launching for you guys soon to support your business of coaching. Um, but yeah, I think working together is a good thing. Hmm. That's, that's a very good point, Magda, because you know, as coaches, we repeatedly ask our clients what support and resources they need. And, as, and we don't ask ourselves that question. So we, you know, a couple of years ago, I was working on marketing because it's not my good point. I think most coaches struggle with that. We're so used to working in our business that we don't get to work on it. And we, like you, all have websites that look like they've never been updated for years. And, and uh, Or in yeah. my case, a website that literally has not been updated for years. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Guilty. And no social media presence. Me too. Guilty of that. So, you know, we want these things, but we don't, we don't do that. So this word around support and resources, I think is just a good, um, it's good that we take it as in our own self-development and start to work on it. A colleague once said to me a few years ago, you gotta know who's your dream team. And I always thought about that. Well, what, what does that mean? You know, who is in your dream, dream team? And eventually I got to know that means who can support you for all those things, you know, that you have a gap around. We all do have those gaps, you're not good at everything. But you know, so building, a, building something, some support and resources for ourselves as coaches, I think will be the key and now we can say we're working in our business and on it too. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's, that's awesome. I think, what, so for me, part of the biggest part of the coaching uh, training has been just around increased self-awareness. Um, and I think in many areas I've always, like, I, I've, I pride myself in self-awareness. I, I, I try to at least, I'm sure there's many, there, there, sure. I know there's many blind spots I still have, but that's a different topic maybe for a coaching session. Um, but I think what's, what's interesting is utilize all of you who just started or are starting the coach training, um, really work on yourself. I think the program, the way we've structured it, um, will force you to do that no matter what. But at first I think I was a bit resistant to that because it was just weird. I'm like, I, I, I'm not, why, like, why are we training people to, to think about themselves? Like we're supposed to be here to help others. What the hell? But, you know, I've realized that self-awareness is really powerful in terms of coaching, but also in terms of growing your business. So I think, you know, as you're on this journey, don't just think about, okay, how can I be a better coach? But think about what am I really, really good at and what do I suck at? And like be comfortable um, to have these go from unconscious incompetencies to conscious incompetencies to conscious competencies. <laughs> um, I learned something. Where, where is Ram? Um, <laughs> spoken, spoken like a coach. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, but you know, and I, I literally, what I do, I, I literally take notes. I, I have like a running document of things where I'm like, oh, look this up, improve this. And um, I think when you look at it from the two kind of worlds, me as a coach and me as a business person, keep making that list and feedback both those lists to us actually. Um, because on the coaching bit, Cindy and Ram can continue to provide webinars, et cetera, and support um, on those kinds of things. And we can work into our curriculum. For um, the business part, we can weave it into this form. This is what this form needs to be. It needs to be you guys identifying, like, where do you need help? Where do you need support? Um, and, you know, we can learn this stuff together, uh, but we can also connect each other where um, we can complete each other's uh, I skills. Yes, please, someone who wants to Mark speak. Yes, Magda, this is Karine from Johannesburg. Good evening. Hello. Hi there. The previous speaker, not Cindy, the previous lady, I'm assuming that she was in India. And I just, yes, I just want to take up where she said about collaborating. And I would take it a step further in terms of a conscious world of, of co-creating together. Now, I found that the ICF did not um, enlist that. It's become far too corporate, far too complicated, uh, far too expensive for third world countries um, or even India for that matter. Um, so 
I love this organization that um, I've come on a couple of times and listened to you. And I like the blend of Eastern philosophy and spirituality because you are dealing with a human being that is of all those aspects. It's not only business as usual, uh, the corporate mantle that you wear when you walk into a corporation. So I would love it if this organization could be more collaborative um, and co-create, and I'll tell you what it is. So for the past 10 years, I've had to study everything that I needed for my business. So I had to become a jack of all trades, including creating my own website, the social media, how that actually works. And that is all time consuming. So we need an organization that can do that at a nominal fee because you're working with economics. I mean, how many people are in India? So you take the percentage of coaches. If we talk there's 7 billion people on the planet, what is the percentage of coaches out there? So it's not saturated. And so therefore the economy of scales to create a business hub for us coaches to do all of that at a nominal fee. That's my soliloquy for the night. <laughs> that is a wonderful soliloquy and you are completely aligned with kind of what, what we think is how we can help you guys. That's, that's awesome. Um, I will, if you don't mind, I might send you an email after this to get your ideas Good. of what kinds of services would be available because um, we are, uh, we're already looking at, yeah, what, what, can we, what, what can we do in terms of tech to help not just our community, because, you know, whenever we talk about coaches, we don't just talk about people who train with Coacharia. So um, we've trained mm. over 600 coaches to credentials. We've trained um, over 30 now to mastery, and we're number one in terms of numbers for that one uh, globally, which is pretty cool. But that's still a very small number. And we want to, you know, we want to benefit thousands and thousands. And we hope that all of you come exactly. train with us. Of course, that makes our business grow. But um, like, you know, both uh, the panelists before said, it's about building awareness of coaching in general. It's about um, collectively increasing uh, visibility of coaching. And um, I think Coach Arya can make an impact there. So let's, let's do that together. That's, that's awesome. But just coming in on that coaching, um, creating more coaches out there and but it's not only about the title coach and uh, the mm. the methodologies it's about the type of coach the type of coach that is compassionate the mm. type of coach that is not in competition because there is no competition you are yeah. so unique and it's to accommodate that and bring that awareness into coaching so you're dealing with more compassionate people it, I'll give you an example so for the past 14 months, I was being down with Lyme's disease, you know, bitten from a tick. Mm. So things went a little haywire and I decided that I wasn't joining ICF any longer. I found their pricing far too steep uh, for what um, they actually give or do. So I actually got an email from the president, Mook, and I stated to her that you know, that this is a third world country. Um, this is what I'm looking for in terms of a coaching organization that I'm not getting from ICF. And she did not hear me. And this is the sad part. The, this is a coaching organization. She did not hear me. She just said, so do you want me to lower the fee and then you just pay for six months? She didn't hear anything else. And that's why I say, it's not just the credential, I'm a coach. It's who are you being as a coach? That's what I'm looking for in an organization. I would be happy if you think that we are that kind of organization. I think that would be, um, that would be a, a good, good goal to achieve where you can tell us that we <laughs> are the kind of corporate oh, being. people. Good. So, no, so, one, thank you. Um, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, I, I had a question. Sorry. Yeah. Did you go on? Uh, no, I? you finish. I, I, uh, <laughs> go on. I, I, let me just wait. Yeah. <laughs> Should I? Yeah, please. 
uh, one question I had to Magda, Cindy, and everybody out there, since I'm fresher in this field, uh, the kind of people I have been talking to, you know, they are a little, I mean, not little, but not too much aware about coaching. The upper strata of the society is, of course, very well aware. The people who are aware, they know very much about what coaching is. But it becomes very difficult to actually convince the, the other strata who you really want to reach out to. You know, yesterday I was talking to a normal housewife. So she was asking me, is it like too psychological in nature? How does it uh, affect your psyche aspect? So I really didn't have any answer on that front. So how do we actually convince, you know, the, the sections which are totally left out, which just don't know about coaching at all? So let me, um, I would like one of the actual coaches to answer this, but I do want to tell you with something. If any of you, as you're coming across obstacles like this, please, please, please just drop me a quick email. Just super informal is fine. Because one thing I've actually been working on is, um, there's no name for it yet, but it's a client coaching toolkit. So um, I think awareness is one problem, but uh, clearly and without the jargon um, explaining to, you know, Joe Schmo, what is coaching, what to expect from the coaching conversation, things like that, demystifying, but also setting expectations and getting people excited about it. I think that's missing. So that's something I've actually been working on. Um, literally a toolkit that um, you, Coacharia coaches, can have. So when you're talking to a potential client or a current client, you can give them some material to read as background if they want, if you think it's helpful. Um, for example, you know, one thing that's been really powerful for me is just the concept of unconditional positive regard. Um, it's like, it blew my mind when I learned of its existence and I've, I've changed my entire outlook on how I speak to people, how I even talk to my dog and my cat, you know, like it, it's seriously unconditional positive regard interactions. Um, but I didn't understand. And, and Ram has been illustrating that with me, with his conversations since I've met him. But it's only recently, maybe six months ago, that I really understood the concept. And now I can see how he could have reacted to me. And I can understand why his and my relationship is so good and so positive, because he's always been treating me with unconditional positive regard. And I was just thinking to myself, it would have been so cool when Ram started coaching me. You know, first coaching conversation I had with him was five years ago. Um, I didn't start working with Kocharya until two years ago. Like, imagine five years ago, if Ram had given me you know, just a hand up, be like, Magda, this is just so, you know, like this session, like th this is something that is really core to who I am as a coach um, and as a person. And I thought you would benefit from learning more about it. It could, and just giving me that without instructions, I do what I want with it. It would have been such an interesting, powerful thing. And I could have been using it and changing that mindset for the past five years. Um, so I want to create that kind of tool set for you guys to have for your clients. So please think of ideas, think of obstacles you have come across, email me. Just to add on to what you said, Magda, and you know, respond to the question. Um, I think this exact same question I raised in a webinar a couple of years ago. And it was, uh, so, you know, I was all like, coaching is just too elitist, you know, it's really, um, you know, there, there is there is an economic uh, divide on that. Uh, I think Kisindi remembers that conversation. Um, and, and, you know, really, and, and exactly this, you know, how do I get through to a homemaker, a college student, you know, what coaching is all about. And it was a struggle. It's not easy doing that today. But I think I've come a long way in that. Today, I look forward to those conversations. I don't dread them anymore. If somebody, you know, is willing to challenge you so fundamentally uh, and, you know, ask you the most basic of questions, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to really, you know, test yourself in many ways. Mm. Uh, and what I did, in fact, and, you know, I mean, uh, I wish I spoke to you earlier, Magda, about this, but in the last uh, couple of months, uh, I have put together you know, uh, it's, it's no more than two pages. So anybody who comes to me, you know, unsure about coaching or want to know more, or I want them to know more, uh, they are mandatorily given this two pager. And I've heard people come back to me saying that, you know, it's, it really has sort of clarified things. Mm. Uh, I'm not to say that, you know, that 
that will work always, right? But the point I'm trying to say is it's got to be in your language. It's got to be from your heart. It has got to be from your experience as a coach because it's like every coach must have an elevator pitch ready, right? In an elevator, you get 20 seconds and you could make or break the deal. So can you convince somebody or can you tell somebody in 20 seconds, okay, leave 20 seconds, 60 seconds, what coaching can do? That's hard. <laughs> when you look in the mirror and tell yourself, yeah, hey, I'm a coach and I do da da da. Yeah. I'm a doctor, I save lives. Yeah. I'm an engineer, I do this. I'm a whatever teacher, I teach. I'm a coach, fill in the blanks. So important. Yeah. It took me many, many months and still it's work in progress. Every time I say, you know, that I'm the coach and I do this, I come back and I say, I could have done better. Mm. But the point is, it's okay to be work in progress. We are developing every day as coaches, right? But we must work out our, you know, if there's one thing I want to leave everyone here with and, you know, share my experience and my growth in this particular area, it is about making that elevator pitch for yourself. One for 60 seconds. If you can make a two pager or a one pager, that's fantastic. So there are two different levels of communication because you never know where you may meet your next client. Mm. You never know. The possibilities are so exciting and so endless. I love that, VG. And it's another thing I can relate to um, that Ram has been pushing me a little bit about um, is just the whole issue of confidence and um, yeah, being able to actually acknowledge um, what, what you're good at um, and not being shy about it. I think it's something that uh, women struggle with the most. It's, it's called the confidence gap, I believe. Um, and to actually this webinar, to be perfectly honest, is one of my steps in being able to say kind of what you were just talking about. I am a coach. I am a whatever. For me, it's about, I know what I'm doing. I have started several small businesses. Um, I have certain things I have no idea about, but there's a bunch of other things I know how to do and can share with this community and empower this community to be successful in their jobs as, as coaches. So, um, yeah, I think maybe we should do a session kind of just on confidence building because I think elevator pitch. Yes, I agree with you. It's, it's practically useful because you may literally run into somebody and convert them into a client. But I think even if you don't use that, I think it's a good thing for kind of for self-confidence to be able to say, to, to write down, like, this is, um, this, this is me. I I'm good at this. Uh, this is where I need to work on and I'm okay with all of that. Um, and then maybe next step, say it to yourself and watch yourself or record yourself like this webinar. Um, I'm going to force myself to watch it and I'm already dreading it. Like I, I hate seeing myself and listening to myself, but I'm going to do it. Um, I think we should do maybe <laughs> at least a one webinar where we talk about this kind of stuff. I think it'll be helpful, yeah. especially for the ladies out there, but I think for everybody. Yeah, Can I yeah. interject? Yes. Who is this? May this is Corinne again. I just oh, want to interject sorry. you with the eleva elevator speech. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Essentially, your elevator speech is who are you as a brand? Mm -hmm. And if we work on, because you come out of the marketing arena, if you work on who are you as a brand, not your company, you. Yeah. And then write your story as you as the brand, there's your elevator speech, which is unique to who you are as an individual. Yeah, it's a great, who, yeah. great suggestion. Okay. Send cool. me and if I may add on there, who are you as a brand and what is the problem you're solving? Yeah. Let's, um, if if customers, I, I think it'd be good if you guys, again, um, maybe email me some of your ideas. I think we should do a whole webinar on this, um, you as a brand. I think it's a really good topic. And um, yeah. I heard someone's voice trying Magda, to- This is yeah. me, Adam here. Hi. Hi. So I was listening to all the suggestions that were coming on, uh, you know, how to create a personal brand around coaching. Uh, I wanted to come at this at a slightly different level and uh, check if uh, there is a possibility of doing something like this. I, I have worked in marketplaces. And one of the things that I have seen is uh, fledgling industries and growing industries as best served, are, are best served by concepts like yellow pages and listings. What happens with some things of these kinds is that you don't have to necessarily sell yourself, you know, uh, as a coach first. You just need to differentiate yourself from other coaches. Just to give you a sense, as an example, 
you know when you're looking for auditors for your company when you if you're a very large company you would probably choose from price water house coopers and um, you know kpmg because they are the best of the lot uh, in your opinion like that if you want to look at consulting at a strategic level you may probably look at uh, mckinsey and other brand but if you're not at that level you still want to look for consultants you would typically go look at the yellow pages some sort of a listing now i wanted to check if there has been any attempt by any coaching organization across the world to do some kind of a listing or think about a concept of a listing yeah. where you drive you know a larger community purpose around coaching so that the idea of coaching doesn't need to get sold because that's where a whole lot of starting trouble arises how i yep. differentiate myself from other coaches uh, you know depends on a variety of things my proximity to the customer my own personal capabilities etc selling that is probably a lot easier than to start with this whole process where the individual is fighting and a, a new system which doesn't know anything about coaching you are reading my mind is this something that's already in progress we're um probably going to be the first thing that we release to you guys so um I will be pinging you for some advice <laughs> since you so kindly volunteered. I know you didn't, but still. Um, no, by all means, please do. Uh, to answer your question, yes, there have been attempts. The problem is, is that I, again, my personal opinion, I think coaching as an industry is very um, tech savvy, whereas we deal with tech savvy clients. Um, and there needs to be some, there needs to be a meeting of those two things. So I see where Kocharya can really benefit is actually bring you a bit more tech savvy um through tools like you just mentioned so that we can kind of meet halfway and still you know make things easy to use so that people who you know coaches who aren't tech savvy can still easily be able to utilize them but um yeah something that the public can access etc so i any ideas you have i would welcome them please email me you know how to reach me sure. but yeah short story is yes we're a hundred percent aligned okay So in terms of public directories, ICF, uh, the, the 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 credential coach finder, uh, is actually a fantastic directory. But uh, again, there are country specific dimensions, and you need to be credential to get onto that coach finder. But I do yeah. know uh, I have had people reach out to me on the coach finder, though uh, I must say it's not a great source of uh, generating leads. uh it is available and there are a couple of uh, private uh, you know coach aggregators who have their own directories on which you can get that so let's let's not promote those yet maybe let's use ours <laughs> no no just say because we should know the marketplace so i know i know i'm just teasing but i think uh, coacharya uh, directory would be fantastic because cool on uh, it yeah <laughs> because i think it'll just give all of us you know the the visibility i think we probably deserve and yeah. don't have today totally agree um just a fire guys we only have about 5 minutes left so i'm going to yeah. ask that people don't jump in anymore um other than pradeep i think pradeep has something to say uh yeah uh hi hi magda hi cindy hi yeah. yeah. so uh, i'll just i'll just make this really very quick uh, uh since i've seen and grown the digital industry in india since the last 20 years i would like to just share some of my observations while i see that most of us here are quite uh, uh, you know enthusiastic and wanting to go on with building a digital presence like a website a social media etc i slightly probably you know disagree with that sort of an approach mainly because of two things because i have been observing the trend very very closely in terms of how coaches market themselves uh right from maybe something as big as mind valley where they teach you how not to be a mediocre coach at 80000 dollars and go up to a half a million dollars to someone who comes up and says that how you have to make yourself as a coaching brand um i uh, being a branding consultant myself and having evangelized uh, digital to a great extent in india i feel the most important prerequisite that we need as coaches to do is a build up our strengths weaknesses Mm-hmm. our niche as we are and then share and bring that down uh, you know up to the world through the digital medium so i guess though we might have a overbearing enthusiasm to probably launch our own websites or go on to the social media and just clutter the space even more i think we need to be considerate about 
who we are, how we build it. And as Viji and uh, Kareen rightly said, is building up who you are as a brand. But who you are as a brand is to a great extent depending upon who you are internally as you yeah. and bringing that into the world. And I think that is a precursor to all the marketing activities you talk about. So while it's really necessary to attract, which is the A of everything, but the most important thing is the B, which is the balance sheet of who you are and then taking it on to the world. That's very, very fair comment. And I think um, what will be helpful is, I think we will do a session just on branding alone, for sure. I think that's a big topic. Um, another thing I'll say is, I, as we go along through these webinars, I'll start putting together a bit of a timeline so that um, maybe, you know, after a few months, we have kind of like, almost like a solid business, um, not plan, but a timeline of the kinds of things you should be uh, focusing on as you go from, I want to be a coach to I want to be a credentialed, great, awesome, successful full-time coach. So we can kind of figure out, you know, what are the necessary steps and what are the things that are kind of optional. That's one thing I'll say. And the other thing I'll say to you, Pratip, I, I do agree that you need to focus on your skills first, obviously. Um, but I don't agree about let's not build a website because it's cluttered. End of the day, um, the world has changed, is changing, and um, it's your business card. Um, the reason I'm not getting any more uh, requests for my consulting services is, A, because my LinkedIn changed the, to a different title, but also because my website sucks. Like, honestly, either I would not hire me, or I would think, oh, maybe she's so busy that she doesn't have time to do her own website, but she's amazing at others. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, uh, it's your business. No, Manta, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not against making the website. What I'm trying to say is that after visiting, I, I, let me tell you my journey. Before I chose Kocharia, I went to almost 16 to 18 websites of the best academies uh, into coach training. But what really brought me to Kocharia is the content and what reverberates out there. And what reverberates out there comes through not just uh, uh, a preaching approach, but something where you have experienced it and put it. So I guess the most important thing to even a website or a social media presence is who you are and what you are and that coming up onto your website. That, that's what. So I'm, I'm not against making the website or the social media, but yeah. it's about a deep in introspection and penning down who you are, what you yeah. are, and how you are there to make an impact on others. Because yeah. that's what people are going to do. Or you can, in the case to do it, you can have a website and you can have good social media messages and quotes on coaching and uh, people will just come and say, hey, looks like any other person, you know, how is it different? Yeah. And just go. Oh. So while you might think it is a lead generator, it could also be, you might be losing out your clients because you've not represented yourself properly. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. No, that's so, what, so what you're saying. Yep. Sorry. So what you're saying is what resonates, I think, with most of us. How are we contributing? Whether it's to ourselves, to our profession, to the bigger picture of the world, to social development. What kind of a contributor are you, or what is your contribution footprint, right, in everything that we do? And it's lovely, Magda, because now our coaches can send you emails or messages that will open the topic up on what their gaps are or what they want to work on in their business. And then we can create a lovely content moving forward. Exactly. Thank you so much. So guys, we are going to wrap up because this is, you know, it's one hour. Um, but I, thank you so much. To me, it's been uh, a great brainstorm. Um, so I think I have all the information which, you know, I can build uh, for us. I we will build this together, but I'll put the schedule together, um, which we can build a great webinar series around. So please, Magda at Kocharia.com. I will put this in the, actually, I think I've spoken to all of you. Like, let, let's be honest. Everyone has my email. Um, <laughs> so please email me ideas, comments, etc. I will continue to collate these and um, we will see you here next month, I hope. I'm not sure what um, the topic will be, but something tells me that branding is a good place to start. Um, so we'll see. Pradeep, I will be asking you to be on the panel for the branding bit. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. And I think it was it, who was the person who suggested this to begin with? I think it was Viviana, to be, if I'm being honest. So thank you, Viviana, for getting this webinar to be alive to begin with. Um, all right, guys. And by the way, also, any feedback just on 
this format, etc. Please, please, please send that to me as well. Like I said, I'm a tiny bit anxious about this. It's my first time doing this on my own. Um, and it's a bit painful to watch it later. Uh, but I'm also the kind of person who improves based on constructive feedback. So while I will definitely appreciate any pats on the back, I will also very much appreciate any Magda stuff moving around so much um, <laughs> type things. So you're a great Magda. You're great. <laughs> thanks, Cindy. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, a highly energizing kickoff session. Oh, good, good, good. That, that's one thing you can always count on me on um, <laughs> energy. <laughs> All right, team. Um, good to see you. And I will see you here next month, hopefully. Um, or I'll see you next week at our next webinar. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.